Well, good afternoon. I'm Theo Douglas. I cover city government for the Bakersfield, California, and TBC Media. And you are watching Off the Press. This is a twice a week program we do to look at local government and, of course, this year, uh, local elections. And uh, we're joined by a number of folks this afternoon. Uh, most immediately to my left is uh, Ward 5 Bakersfield City Councilman Harold Hansen, who is. Uh, seeking his uh, fifth term this year, and uh, I'll be talking with him along with uh, local consultant Russell Johnson himself, a former uh, Ward 7 Bakersfield City Councilman, uh, and also uh, Nicole Parra, adjunct professor of political science over there at uh, Cal State Bakersfield, and herself a former uh, assemblywoman. In fact, as usual, I'm the only person in the room who hasn't held some sort of office, so... Uh, <laughs> Some people sometimes tell me I should work on that, but we're going to talk today about that with uh, Mr. Hansen, um, who has been on the council since the year 2000, the very year that uh, our current mayor, Harvey L. Hall, was first elected. It's quite a tenure. And uh, up until pretty recently, he retired uh, last year back in November, uh, Mr. Hansen was uh, simultaneously, uh, somewhat, uh, the executive or an executive vice president over at Citizens Business Bank. And so... Uh, here we are. He's uh, been in office uh, roughly 16 years now and uh, seeking four more years. Uh, Mr. Hansen, welcome. Theo, thank you. Um, I know 60 years is a long time, but uh, it's been exciting 60 years. I think it's kept me fairly young, keeps my brain active, and I want four more. And I okay. guarantee you, I'll put it in writing. Okay, that well, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we might ask you for that. You know, we okay. always like to get stuff in writing, uh, <laughs> just just to have it on hand. Uh, but uh, talk to talk to us and uh, viewers about uh, about wh why it is you're seeking that that fifth term. What prompted you to uh, well, throw your hat in the ring? You know, uh, Theo, it, it 60 years ago I ran as a result of Bob Price asking me to come on board, and uh, it was an interesting process because as Nicole can tell you, and Russell, that I had no idea what that process was, mm -hmm. but it is, there. there is a, a way to do it, a way not to do it. Yeah. And was fortunate enough to get elected by a very slim margin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm the kind of guy that it took me a year or two to really get my feet on the ground. Uh, and since then, it's just evolved into something, uh, really a passion. Uh, you know, there's so many things within the city that, Mm -hmm. remarkable government's remarkable and uh, you know the city of Bakersfield I like to think that we run it as a business mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure I can say that about Sacramento mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> or or Washington DC but uh, mm -hmm. you know I look it upon the uh, the council member as being the board of directors the CEO is Alan Tandy mm -hmm. and we give direction to Alan we give direction to the city attorney Gen Gennaro Yes. Uh, right now, uh, it's very, very active time for me. Uh, I'm vice mayor, and uh, I, I remember about seven or eight years ago when I was vice mayor the first time, I probably spent an extra five hours, maybe ten hours a week uh, in city business. I'll tell you right now, we've become growing so much and so involved in, many pro in the process mm -hmm. that uh, I'm probably spending 20, 25, 30 hours a week. It's very... Very busy time. Uh, water yes. is a huge deal. You're chairman uh, of the city water board. Yeah, and I'm chairman of the water board. But, uh, you know, we have the GSA, the Ground Sustainability mm -hmm. Group, that we put together. And uh, we could talk about that later if we, if you like. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's not real exciting but uh, for well, the average guy. It's but water. it's exciting like for water. us. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I'm on the... Uh, uh, the airport for San Joaquin Valley yes. as a director of the League of Cities, mm -hmm. as a city of Bakersfield representative, as a vice mayor, as a director. So it's just on and on uh, with these activities, plus doing our normal duties within the city right. the council. So mm -hmm. that's kind of it. Very good. Very good. Uh, I wanted to ask if there was uh, any particular uh, issue which uh, did prompt you, uh, perhaps more than uh, the ones you've mentioned, to, to seek that fifth term. I know for some council members, I think uh, Councilwoman Jackie Sullivan uh, has mentioned this, uh, you know, folks are interested to see the city's uh, major road projects get a little farther along. I don't know if that was something on your mind. It's not real complicated, um, as Russell would tell you, that, uh, you know, the number one thing, I believe, is the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have the duty to make sure that we don't spend more than what we take in. 
So that leads to other areas that become a problem, like public safety. Yeah. Uh, you know, 63% of every dollar we take in in the general fund goes out to public safety. Mm -hmm. And people say, you know, why aren't you hiring more police officers? Why don't we have more firemen? Well, you know, the cold hard facts are that it costs about $125,000 to $150,000 a year to put one of these men or women in that position. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply that by 10, we're getting into a million dollars or over a million dollars quickly. Yes. So that's that's an area, but I've always supported mm -hmm. law enforcement and, 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 and public safety and a fire. So I, you know, I've been very, very consistent upon that uh, over the years. Um, the next area is kind of controversial with a couple of our council members, but uh, the roads, the uh, West Side Parkway, Centennial mm -hmm. Corridor, yeah, critical areas. Uh, th the train left the station a long time ago, and we need to get that thing completed. It will be completed mm -hmm. if we can get through the courts. We will get through the courts. Yeah. But the issue is, you know, how long it's going to take. Yes. And unfortunately, it costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, and money that could be spent for roads, this type of thing. Sure. And then lastly, i just interested in the overall condition of the city of Bakersfield. Uh, you know, I love dealing with people. I don't really care about, you know, the TV part of it. Uh, the council meetings are, are fun. Mm -hmm. They're fun. I mean, you know, but, you know, I don't, the TV, but I, I like the behind the scenes stuff. And I don't know how Russell felt about that, but I get a call from a constituent and says they got a barking dog or there's somebody's racing down the road or this is broken. Somebody didn't pick up their trash. Mm -hmm. um, some very basic things and some very serious. Yeah. But I like to follow up immediately when it comes to taking care of the customer. And I always do that and uh, check with the staff, check back with our city, with the constituent to see it's taken care of. Now, that doesn't mean that you can do everything every time, mm -hmm. as Russell knows. <laughs> but most of the time, you can do something and if you explain to the people why you cannot do something. Right. You know, but offer an alternative, a possible alternative, that uh, it seems to work well. Very good. So those are the reasons. Thank you. Harold, you mentioned... Uh, the number of hours you put in, and you mentioned the the 3 a.m. calls. I've gotten those from, I remember one woman, Belinda, great lady, just needed some additional attention on the public safety front. But, you know, you look at that and all that stuff you put in. But let's go back in your history. When we look at your, kind of your, your story. W what have you done in your life? And tell us about your, your, your background. And what do you think most prepared you to be a council member, now that you can look back on all the benefit of uh, years of experience you've had? That's a really good question, Russell. Um, I have to say that I'm not sure what prepared me because I, I watched Mike Maggard, I watched David Couch, I watched Mark Salvaggio, uh, Irma Carson, mm. uh, and others on the council because to tell you the truth, the day I was sworn in, I thought, it was kind of like that picture Robert Redford did when he became a senator or something <laughs> in the movies. What do we do now or what do I do now? Right. It was, I was like, gee, there's a lot of reading here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, so it took me a while to get there. But I will say this. Regarding, I was prepared as far as serving the people and, 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 and my commitment to doing the right thing. Okay, I was raised that way through education, through my family, and I always had the desire in my work life, customer oriented. So I had that, I think that was a real advantage for me. The technical stuff, it took me a while. So tell us a little bit about, you said you talked about the way you were raised. Tell us about some of your mentors, you know. Mm -hmm. You came to Bakersfield, obviously there's a story there. You're, I think you're the only Canadian uh, born a uh, person on the current city council. Are you the only Canadian born council member ever? I am. I, I, I was born in Windsor, Ontario, right across from Detroit. And I lived there actually for 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I came to the United States, that uh, uh, it was a result of visiting an aunt and uncle in San Bernardino when I was in my teens, uh, because my mom and dad and my, my brothers and sisters were still back in Windsor. As a matter of fact, they all are there, the ones that are still surviving. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if you know Detroit, you know Windsor. Um, 
great people, but different part of the country. Yep. I came out to my my aunt and uncle's place, and one weekend they took me down to Newport Beach and down to Laguna Beach, and you know, there's this Canadian kid, you know, 18, 17, 18 years old. I'm going, holy cow, this is <laughs> pretty nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So especially at Newport uh, Beach, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and so. I ended up going back to Windsor, and I spent another uh, six, seven years there. Went back to school, got my finished my education, uh, university education, and uh, finally, and uh, planned. I always knew I was going to end up back in California, and I did. Uh, had an interesting journey. Went to San Bernardino, went to Las Vegas for seven years. That in itself is a real trip. Yep. Uh, I won't give you all the stories on that one. Um, uh, as a result of that, uh, came over to. Uh, I was hired out of a bank, American National Bank, which is gone now. Wells Fargo purchased them, but uh, worked over here. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, and uh, moved to Visalia, Merced, Palmdale, Lancaster. Those are the days that the banks tend to transfer you. They don't do that much anymore, and then eventually ended up back here. And then uh, it's been that story since. Came to Bakersfield in 1981. I can tell you right now, honest to God, true story. Nicole, you've been around Bakersfield a long time, by the way? Born and raised. Oh, born and raised, okay. <laughs> um, my wife and I were uh, in Las Vegas, and I used to have to go over to Monterey on business once in a while. I used to fly over, but I decided one uh, time to drive, and of course, came down 58, and mm -hmm. this was before the uh, freeway was in there, or part of it, whatever it was, and... Uh, I got on uh, Union Avenue, mm -hmm. and it was sometime in July, and it was 1973. Mm -hmm. I can remember that well. <laughs> and uh, I drove along Union Avenue, and I thought, who and, uh, would ever live in Bakersfield, California? <laughs> yeah. A couple of years later, I was offered a job. <laughs> and you know what? Best thing that ever happened to me. Next to coming to the United States of America, which has been a thrill. I became a citizen, and I think I'm a good citizen. I have a lot of respect for my background, but, uh, you know, Canada is Canada, but the United States is the United States. This is my home. This is my country. Mm -hmm. T tell us a little bit about your time here in Bakersfield, because you haven't just been successful here. Your wife, if I recall, had a little successful business for a couple of years, right? Uh, my wife still has a business, uh, Cruising Land Holidays. Uh, she, um, interesting story, Lena had a very successful career with Wells Fargo Bank. And uh, got tired of running up to San Francisco all the time. I say running up. She was flying up. Um, but one day we were thinking about taking a trip. And I said, why don't I stop by this travel agency, which was Cruising Land Holidays. And they were located on Ming Avenue. And uh, I'll pick up some brochures. This is a true story. And uh, so I went in, and there was two gals sitting there. They really had a nice office. I always remember it was really, really nice. And uh, I walked in, and they were talking to each other, two employees. And uh, I stood there. They looked up. They didn't tell me to drop dead. You know, I'll be there with you in a minute. And you know what a minute or two is like when nobody gives you any attention? Mm -hmm. It's forever. Yep. And I picked up the brochure, and I went home, and I told my wife, well, coincidentally... About a week later, we heard from somebody that that business was for, for sale. Mm -hmm. And my, my wife went over and talked to somebody over there and found the owner, an absentee owner. They were losing money. And uh, she came home. She said, I'm going to buy the business. <laughs> Russell, wow. I, said, I, said to, I said to Len, I said, honey, I know what travel businesses normally, they don't make a lot of money, and you mm -hmm. make a pretty good living. She said, that's all right. I'm going to make it successful. And we're going to do a little traveling besides that. And it's been 21 years, so it's, it's been wow. a good ride. Where did you meet your wife? Met my wife in Las Vegas. All right. Yeah. When you were working there? Yep. Before you came over? Yeah. Wonderful. So it's, it's, it's been good. We've been married uh, nearly 45 years. Oh, my goodness. So it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, considering that all the guys in Las Vegas said it would never last. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get married in Vegas then, right? Yes. Through the Elvis Presley uh, Cathedral? Or? Uh, no, <laughs> none of that stuff. <laughs> Not the little, the white, little chapel. white chapel. The little white chapel, right? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So when you were in university, I'm kind of curious, what were you majoring in? 
uh, business and finance. I, you know, I've always been a numbers guy, and uh, I did a lot of that in the bank, although I ended up, I always considered myself a salesman, salesperson, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're selling yourself politics, and oh, yeah. business, and the Californian, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. We represent whoever we do. But, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was just an accident that I got into banking, and mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it just evolved. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, you know, now you've you've done that. You've served on the council. You're there for, uh, or you're getting ready to run the first time. You you said something about Bob Price coming to you. Is that what prompted you to run? Tell tell us about that story and why you decided. You know what? I've been living in Bakersfield. My wife owns a business here. Now it's time to jump on the council. Yeah, I had um, um, retired. The first time, <laughs> 1998. Uh, I don't know why I retired because I, I was too young at that time. But I did, and I was working with my wife in the business. And it's difficult to work with your wife. I mean, I'm a very strong-willed person. She's very strong-willed. We get along well in everything. But probably, you know, in business, it's better to go your own way <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but I was the uh, Rotary Program Chairman for the uh, Bakersfield. Breakfast Rotary, mm -hmm. and Bob was the uh, our speaker that day, that morning, and as my practice at that time, I always got a hold of the speaker ahead of time and tried to arrange to have lunch, a personal mm -hmm. relationship type thing, although I knew Bob, but not well. Um, so I, I called Bob, and we were having a cup of coffee, and uh, <clears throat> he looked over to me, and he said, how would you like to, um, what do you think about running for city council? And I go, what? You know, I'd never, I swear to God, I'd, I voted, but I'd never been in politics in my life. Hmm. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, and I, I said, well, why? Uh, what's what's happening or something? He said, well, uh, what was the fellow's name? Not Knowles, but uh, he was Ward 5. Hmm. He worked for uh, Steve Anderson. I'll think of it in a second. But he was going to resign. It was about four months to go until the election mm -hmm. uh, because he had a conflict, too many conflicts. And when I say conflicts, I don't mean bad. He just mm -hmm. he had a lot of stuff going with S.E. Anderson, Inc., and he was, he was an executive there and uh, couldn't vote, and he felt like you know the mm -hmm. right thing to do was to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bob asked me to consider running for the office and asked me what ward I lived in, and I said, I have the faintest idea. Mm -hmm. Like probably most people, if you say mm -hmm. you yeah. live in Ward right. 1 or 4, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, he went back to his office, had someone check, and uh, I went down and talked to him and uh, decided, well, that kind of sounds interesting. So I, I went home and told my wife, I'm a, I think I'll run for city council. Mm -hmm. She said, how do you do it? And I said, I have the faintest <laughs> idea. Uh, to the rescue. Gene Tackett. Gene no. Tackett. Oh, Gene Tackett. Oh, okay. yeah. he, he's and my a, old he's friend. He's a really fellow my, gaucho. My fellow very UCB liberal gaucho. old right. friend. Right. I, mean, I, mm -hmm. I can say that. Uh, and uh, what happened was uh, Harvey Hall, the mayor, uh, I was not aware of it. And I, maybe I should say this because I'm not. Now, I'm pretty sure that Harvey had something to, that contacted Tackett to contact mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So... Gene did and said, I'll help you if you like. And I said, I'll take all the help mm -hmm. I can get. I think uh, he worked on Hall's campaign, too, that time mm -hmm. in 2000. That's interesting. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. No, no, that was that's fine. And uh, so he, he said, oh, you just have to do what I tell you to do. And I said, well, what's that? He said, well, I'll take care of the marketing in. Uh, you need to raise some money, and here's how you do it. But you need to go knock on doors. Mm -hmm. And I was not working at the time. Like I said, I was retired. And I said, well, how many doors do I have to knock on? He says, what a few. He said, but I'll get you a list. So <laughs> came back, about 300 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was like eight or 9,000 houses, mm -hmm. predominant voters, you know. Mm -hmm. High propensity. Not everybody, but right. just predominant voters. And I, st other than apartments, mm -hmm. not, and I didn't hire anybody to do it. I went out every day about 3 o'clock mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. afternoon till 7 or 8, till it got dark. And uh, I took one weekend off over about a three and a half month period and said, you know, I introduced myself and I'm running for mayor and I'd like you to support me with a little handout, mm -hmm. usual right, right. goodies on it. 
And you know, I won that thing uh, by 399 votes. Sarah Taki ran against me. I don't know, Nicole, did you know Sarah? No. Very fine lady, mm -hmm. very fine. Unfortunately, she just was deceased last year. Oh, no. uh, and uh, another fellow by the name of Russo, uh, not Russo Books, but mm -hmm. Russo. Um, and so I barely, barely won. And I can tell you for a fact, I had, I, over the years, I've had more people tell me the only reason they voted for me because I knocked on their, their door. door. Well, yeah. Grassroots. That, uh, yeah, retail makes politics. a huge difference. <laughs> <works. laughs> yeah. Retail politics. That, that personal uh, contact is everything. Yeah, that personal touch, exactly. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, getting out there and talking to folks. Uh, you know, and uh, making that uh, first impression and, uh, yeah, letting them know what you want to do. All right. Well, uh, we'll hear more from you. We're going to take a short uh, break here. But uh, when we come back uh, on Off the Press, we'll uh, continue talking with uh, Ward 5 uh, Councilman and Vice Mayor Harold Hansen, who's uh, seeking his uh, fifth four-year term. Thanks for watching Off the Press. I'm Theo Douglas.